Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing off my Edgar Markov uh, Vampire Tribal EDH list. Uh, my Edgar is a little um, faded. Uh, he was just printed a little misprint. Uh, the text really isn't super black, it's kind of a little more faded to a gray. Um, if you don't know him, 6 mana 4-4, four, four, first strike haste, when he attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of your vamps. And then if he's in the command zone or on the field and you cast a vampire spell, you get a 1-1 one, one vampire. These are my special little uh, saffron olive signed you know, vampire tokens, but really, they're supposed to be these boys. Just one, one vanilla guys. Uh, these are my lands. I run 30 lands just because my curve is relatively low. They're just basics in miscellaneous order. Continuing onward into the meat of the deck, in no particular order except the initial starting non-basic lands, uh, Westvale Abbey. I make a ton of creatures really quick, so sacrificing five creatures and getting a... Uh, 9-7 Flying Indestructible Haste, Lifelinker. Uh, pretty, pretty good. Ghost Quarter to destroy some problematic lands. Opal Palace, it's just kind of good to have. It can filter if you need it to, and uh, put a little more counter on, a, on your commander, you know? Rogue's Passage for some unblockable damage. Temple of the False God for some, you know, turn 5. Get a little more mana. Bajuka Bog, it should be in every black deck. Uh... Exiles a grave, taps for a black. Really excellent card. If like you should be running if you have a black deck, just take out a swamp and put in Bajuka Bog. Sure it comes in tapped, but exiling a grave is invaluable. I run all the Skylands. I just run them. Uh they're all good to have. Uh especially like turn one. This is a pretty budget deck. Um turn one, scrying, even late game, scrying. Setting up your next draw is always going to be beneficial no matter what point in the game you're in. I run all the bounce lands uh, that I can just because uh, it's a budget deck. And I think they're pretty all right. Eventually, I'd like to upgrade them for shocks. But for now, they're fine. Uh, Dragon Skull Summit. Dra Summit. Dragon Skull Summit. Uh, only check land I have just because I just straight up don't have the others. And I pulled this way back in uh, Ixalan pre-release. Graven Karen. Um, it's the only filter land I have like this. Uh, like, again, I just had it already. Plus, it's kind of vampire themed, so I figure why not? Nomad Outpost. Taps for all the colors and are stabbed. It's pretty fun. Command Tower uh, should be in every commander deck that's more than two colors. Uh, it's, it's Command Tower. That's all I'm going to say about it. Path of Ancestry. I'm playing a tribal deck. So uh, getting any mana and scrying whenever I cast a vampire using the mana, very, very good. Uh, Savage Trium, it's just strictly better Nomad Outpost. It's fetchable and it has cycling. Other than that, no difference. Away from the lands, assuming Legion Landing, you know, not counting that. Uh, one mana, get a 1-1 one, one, uh, lifelinker, and then when I tag with three more creatures, flip it to basically a white land that can make other vampires going on olivia mobilized for war uh flying you can give things haste it's a little scarred outlet if i need madness or anything like that um but overall giving creatures haste pretty pretty good especially when um the deck really doesn't care about discarding or anything like that like you can get things back from the grave kind of easily eldrazi monument uh Creatures get indestructible and flying and plus one, plus one. And at the beginning, you're upkeep, sacrifice a creature or sack it. I make a lot of vampires, so I'll usually just sacrifice like a one, one, or I guess it would be a two, two, uh, to make sure the rest of my team is rock solid. Bora Signet. Mardu doesn't have much ramp. I run all the signets I can in it, aside from Arcane Signet, just because I don't have one. Um, it's just good ramp. It's good filtering. Falcon Wrath Noble for when my creatures do die, I get a little more value from them. Uh, kind of has a little aristocratic feel, but um, four mana for a flying two two that also gives me a one one vamp that will drain uh, an opponent and I'll gain uh, whenever a vamp creature dies. And it's not him or, or sorry, it's not like a creature I control. It's just another creature. So if like a nuke goes off, I'm I'm swimming in it. Lightning Greaves just to give the creatures I want to have. Uh, you know, keep around, keeps them safe, put them to Edgar if I want to, you know, make sure that I can continue to put 1-1 counters on creatures, as well as uh, just give other things haste if you need to. But it's usually just for the Shroud purposes. 
Yeheni, she's great. Uh, she survives nukes whenever Christian Independent Control dies. Put a woman counter on her so she gets large. And she's an indestructible, hasty girl. She's a girl in lore, by the way. Fun fact. Continuing on. And the one the Ruin Sage. So in theory, he's very, very good. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player sacrifices a non-vampire creature. I think this deck only has like one or two non-vampire creatures. So uh, yeah, usually it only hurts my opponents. The only downside is, is he usually dies when I play him. Just because like, People don't want to sacrifice their creatures, and it kind of time walks me a little bit. It's five mana, four, three, which isn't like a great rate, but I figure five mana to at best kill three creatures or at worst eat a kill spell. I don't know. What do you guys think of them? Vona, Butcher, Magan, or Magan, or whatever. Uh, Vigilance Lifelink, excellent card, four, four. So if you guys don't know how she works, uh, the Vigilance is very important, and the tapping is very important because what you do is you go to attack with her, you know, and since she's already considered attacking, uh, the damage is still going to go through, so then you can pay 7 life, you'll gain the 4 back to destroy something your opponent controls. So, excellent card, it's good removal, and it's a non-land permanent, so. Champion of Dusk, very good card. When he enters, uh, draw X and lose X, where X is your vampires. What's great about him is, at worst, if I just play him for 5 mana uh, on the cast you get a vampire from Edgar. So at the very worst, you're drawing two and losing two. And also he's a five mana four, four. So great card. Expensive nuke in Garrick's Wake. Uh, destroy all creatures and planeswalkers you don't control. That's kind of like a top end. And also if I get a lot of creatures out, I can probably just kill someone because no one's going to have anything to defend with. But that's just kind of a top end nuke. Soul Ring because I'm not stupid. If you disagree, you're stupid. Olivia Voldaren, great card. So, four mana, flying, three, three. That's already a fine rate. Uh, pay two mana, she deals one damage to another creature, and then you put a 1-1 one -one counter, and that creature becomes a vampire. So, you can usually use this effect, and then pay five mana, gain control of a vampire for as long as you control her. So, you can... The design of her is to bite another creature, make it a vampire, and then kind of steal it. But what I use her more often than not is um, a two-mana, like, ping on a stick. So pay two mana, give a creature, uh, you basically deal one damage, and then make her stronger. So I'm a fan, and then sometimes you just steal creatures if you want. Great card. She's pseudo-removal. That's kind of how I look at her at the worst. Sanguine Bond. It's all right. This deck... <clears throat> This deck I actually used to have a lot more life gain back in its initial um its initial build. I'm not sure if you guys have seen the spoilers for M21 yet, but there is a legendary creature that's basically Sanguine Bond and it gives your creatures life linkage. He's like a three mana something something uh Sanguine Bond's effect and then pay two black and three, so five mana to give your creatures life link till the end of turn. So I'm probably gonna cut this for that. Merciless Eviction, because it's the best nuke in Magic. Uh, exile all of something you don't like. That's pretty much it. Bloodline Necromancer. Really good card. Five mana for a 3-2 lifelink. That's all right. But it returns a vampire from the grave directly to the battlefield. So uh, more often than not, very useful. Viscera Seer. It's a one mana. One, one. You get a one, one. So immediately you get sack fodder to do it. And it's a good sack outlet. Overall, Scrying, good card advantage. I like Viscerus here. Vampire Nocturnus, a lot of people kind of uh, don't like him. So he's sketchy. He's three black and one right off the bat, so that's a lot of black to get in. He's really only good if the top of your deck is black. And I believe this deck is like 57% black of the, like of the, of the card. So I feel like you've got a pretty good chance of hitting a uh, a black permanent. Um, and if you do get a black permanent, your entire board gets plus two, plus one in flying, so he's a good lord. I'm a big fan of him. Kalidus, he's a big chunky vampire, uh, seven mana, five, five, pay three mana, just destroy a creature, and then make an XX, where X is that creature's, uh, toughness. He's removal, and you get more boys. Indulgent Aristocrat, 
great card. One black, one one lifelink, so he's already pretty good. Pay two mana, sacrifice a creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each vampire you control, which is great because Edgar makes sure he comes in with sack fodder, too, if you want to, at worst, turn 1 or turn 2 if you have the mana, make a 2-2, two, two, or make your 1-1 one, one lifelinker a 2-2. Two, two. I'll end up the Dusk Rose. Whenever, whenever another creature dies, just any other creature, not just you control, dies, put a 1-1 one, one on her, so you make her big, she's a lifelink, and then whenever she dies, just make X 1-1 one, one lifelinks where X is her power. So, worst case scenario, you play her, and she dies, and then you immediately get a 1-1 one, one with lifelink, aside from the 1-1 one, one that you uh, make from Edgar. I'm dropping cards. Skull Clamp, uh, kill a token, made with Edgar to draw two. Seems good to me. Forerunner of the Legion, to tutor any vampire to the top of your deck, and then just draw it next turn, and then whenever another vampire enters the battlefield, just make your biggest vampire even bigger captivating vampire probably the best lord in vampires um he makes him strong and uh tap five just gain control of a creature what's great about him is that you just play him immediately you have him and another vampire from edgar and uh so really all you need to cast is like three creatures including him and you already have more than what you need to steal a creature worst case scenario he's just a lord best case scenario on your end step you're just stealing things mothis he's also a little misprinted uh not misprinted but a little more faded i like mothis a lot he has cool lore eventually i'm gonna cut him for something better when it does come but for now i'm not there yet uh he's just a three three uh for three with menace and at the beginning of your end step put a bounty counter on something and then when that bounty counter dies uh, the creature with the bounty counter dies. Uh, each opponent draws a card and gains two life, so you just put it on your opponent's creature. It's also pretty cool because it gives your opponent's incentive to uh, kill your other opponent's creatures. Sanctum Seeker, whenever a vampire you control attacks, uh, drain each opponent and you gain it. Great card. That's it. The whole deck is aggro. Go wide. And uh, he does some effects just before, uh, you know... He does the effects. <laughs> I can't... I'm losing my thought, my train of thought. He does the effect on attack, so you already... You can probably just kill on attack if you flood out with vampires. And then if not, he just deals more damage, and at worst, you gain life. Also, 4 mana, 3, 4? Not bad. Orzhov Signet? Signets are good. Blade of the Blood Chief? Um, 1 mana, equip 1. Whenever a creature dies, put 2 one, one vampires on the equip... 2 one, one vampires two one one counters on the equipped creature if it is a vampire and i think there's only like one or two non-vampire creatures in the deck speaking of non-vampire creatures in the deck aetheros but he hardly counts as a creature let's be honest uh basically says whenever whenever another non-token creature you control dies uh return it to your hand unless target opponent loses three life so worst case scenario your opponent says yeah it's dead and then uh they lose three life or sorry, or they lose three life. Best case scenario, they don't pay the three, and you just get it back and cast it again. Also, sometimes he's an indestructible 5-4. Maverick Fane, whenever another non whenever one or more vampire, non-vampire tokens you control attacks, make a 1-1 one, one vamp with lifelink. I like him. He's got Moxie, and he's pretty good at uh what's it called? Making dorks. Go for the throat. Just destroy a non-artifact creature, which is most creatures. Stesian Masquerade. Sten... Stensia? Stensia? I don't know how to pronounce that. Masquerade. Attacking creatures you control at first strike whenever a vamp you control deals combat damage to a player. Put a woman counter on it, and it has madness. So, gives your entire attacking field first strike, and if any get through, they get a little bit stronger. And if somehow you discard it, you can cast it. Sorin, Vengeful Man. Um, your creatures have lifelink when it's your turn. Plus them, just ping something, minus them, get something from the grave back, and it's a vampire, which it probably is a vampire anyways. Aetheros aside. Gruuldra's Assassin. I love level up. I think he's a cool mechanic. Uh, one mana, one one. You can level him up if you want. Uh, and if you do, he can start giving creatures minus two, minus two, or he can start giving creatures minus four, minus four. So, at first, he's a small little boy, and then eventually, uh, he's pretty good. He's pretty good removal. Paying one black to uh, give a creature minus four, minus four. 
Anointed procession. So when I make a token off Edgar or a token in general, I get two of them. Butcher Malakir. So then whenever one of my creatures does die, each opponent loses a creature as well. That's a signet. New blood to steal a creature. That's just kind of it. It's just four mana, gain control of a creature, make it a vampire, and replace all effects of keywords with it to vampires, which is phenomenal if you're playing against another tribal deck. Like, I think the best I've ever had with this, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the Merfolk Kumena, but she basically says, tap another Merfolk, she's unblockable, tap three Merfolk, uh, draw a card, tap five Merfolk, put a one-one counter on each creature you control. Which translates to um, tap three vampires, draw a card, and tap five vampires. Tap three vampires, draw a card, tap five vampires, put a one counter on each of your boys. Great card, great card. Return to Dust, I think it's all right. I think Heliod's Intervention is just strictly better because you pay the white-white. I mean, it doesn't exile, but it has bigger upside, and it's modal because if you really want to gain the life, you just could. But I think Heliod's Intervention is better than Return of Dust. That's just a cut I have to make eventually. Worn Power Stone, it's just an okay rock. Like, again, this deck is pretty budget, and I'm sure you've seen that most of the cards are still just the pre-con. But, yeah, it's a pretty decent rock. Blood Baron of Escopa, great card, because he's a 5-mana 4-4 with lifelink protection from black and white, which is... Sure, you can't really target it, but you're probably not going to target it anyways, because I don't think I have anything in this deck that really does target urine creatures for any effects. So at worst, he's a really good blocker that gains life. He's a really good attacker that gains life, sometimes unblockable, sometimes, you know, opponents can't get through if you're defending. And then if you have more than 30, which you start at 40 life in EDH, and your opponent has less than 10, which isn't as often, but I mean, you are playing aggro, so it's not impossible. He's a 10-10 with flying. Door of Destinies. Choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, put a charge counter on it. Creatures you control of the chosen type, get plus one, plus one for each charge counter on it. Makes your vampires pretty big. Uh, makes some big boys, just for existing. Tef reach protection so I can leave the game without quitting. Swords, because I don't really care. Um, the way I look at swords, I think in EDH, swords is better than path. Because path is just like... I feel like ramping or getting an extra land is more relevant in EDH than gaining, like, five life as an EDH, if that makes sense. I think it's all situational, too, because I think if someone played, like, a World Spine Worm, I'd kind of feel bitter about swordsing it, but Path would be better to kill a World Spine Worm, but it's also, like, if my opponent played, like, a Birds of Paradise, you know, and I pathed it, then they just get a tap land, and that's probably what they were going to do with it anyways, you know, but... Swordsing of birds would probably just be better. I don't know. Situationally, they're different, but I think overall swords is better in EDH. Sangromancer, whenever a creature and opponent control dies, gain three life. Whenever an opponent discards a card, gain three life. Uh, you just gain a lot of life. Um, opponents' creatures are usually dying, and not often are opponents discarding card unless you're playing wheels, which I'm not. But uh, yeah, it's a good way to stay alive. Grasp of Fate, because it's just a super O-ring. That's really it. It's just an O-ring that hits each opponent. Bloodlord of this guy, Vazgoth. I think he's good, but I don't like him. Just because it's like... You already have to have the effect go off. It won't work when you cast uh, your little, like, tokens. Or no, I guess it does work on tokens. I feel like I've never had great experiences with him. I think for the most part... He's just been, like, a quick 6-6 six, six for 6 mana sometimes, and that's about it. But I digress. Cordial Vampire, because he's insane. Whenever he or another creature dies, put a 1-1 one, one on each vamp you control. Um, a little sub theme about my deck, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I don't really care if creatures die, because uh, you can get them back pretty easily, and uh, I have a lot of sack effects with, like, Indulgent Aristocrat, um, Viscerous Seer, and that's just too off the top of my head, but even just a nuke or like an opponent blocking your creatures will just make the rest of them stronger. Falconrath Aristocrat. I mean, honestly, it is a 4 1 with flying in haste that's also indestructible sometimes. And at least comes in with fodder to make it indestructible. So it's either a really good attacker 
or it's a, a really good blocker. Patron of the Vein, when it enters, just destroy a creature. And then uh, when it whenever a creature in opponent control dies, exile it and put a 1-1 one -one on each vampire you control, which also hits the token that uh, he does, because you do get the tokens off cast. So um, he basically enters as a 6-mana 5-5 five -five that buffs your field and kills a creature and makes it so creatures are exiled for your opponents. So uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of him. For 6-mana, that's good value. Wrath of God, because I don't like my opponents having big boards. Mortify. Uh, I feel like Vindicate or Anguish I'm making would be better. They probably are. Actually, they for sure are. But uh, again, this is pretty budget, and I'm not really motivated to update this deck anytime soon unless something crazy comes out. Heirloom Blade to make a vampire strong, and then whenever it dies, just get a new vampire. I usually put this on like a token or something, because either your opponent won't want to like eat four damage from a token at the very least and then like redraw you essentially so heirloom blade pretty good some people don't run it some people do take it or leave it i don't really mind it crackling doom it's a mardu staple uh each opponent loses like their biggest creature and they each take two it's instant speed it's pretty all right stromker captain uh gives all my vampires plus one plus one and first strike so if you look at it at the very worst, he's a 3-mana 2-2 uh, two -two that is a 2-2 two -two with first strike that also makes another 2-2 two -two with first strike as well as buffing your entire field and giving them a very good keyword. Kalidus, 4-mana, uh, lifelink, whenever a non-token creature in opponent control dies, exile it, you make a 2-2, two -two, and then uh, pay 3-mana, sacrifice a vampire zombie, put two woman counters on him. He's good. Uh, he makes it, he's just good grave hate, you know? Well, not like Grave Heat, but he does shut down some things. Plus, he's just like a good blocker with Lifelink. He can make himself big, if anything. And he's a way to flood the board with uh, two twos after like a nuke or so. Malakir Blood Witch. Uh, great card to just kind of get someone with. Five mana, four, four, pro white, flying, whatever. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses life equal to the greatest, sorry, equal to the number of vampires uh, you control. You gain life equal to the lost. So it's a big, it's a big drain. At the very worst, let's say I'm in a pod of four people, including myself, it's five mana, I have nothing on the field, I get the 1-1 from Edgar, so everyone loses two, and I gain six. At the very worst. So I drain everyone, I gain six, and it's a pro-white 4-4 four, four flyer for five. Works for me. Thought Vessel, good ramp, no max hand-sized, kind of it. Savai Crystal, um, it's a good rock with cycling. I actually just cut, um, I believe it was the Mardu banner in turn for this, just because the Mardu banner says, yeah, pay three mana, sack it, draw a card. But this one just says, discard it, like just cycling for two, so it's less. I just think the crystals are way better than the banners. Drana Liberator Malakir. Flying first strike, when she deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each attacking creature you control. Which is really, really good, because since she has first strike, right, she deals combat damage first, and then she buffs the rest of your team. And, um, pretty solid, you know? Like, for a three mana, three mana, two, three, with flying first strike and no keyword, that's good. It's a good rate. Disrupt decorum, so I can disrupt the decorum of my opponent's fields and make sure that they don't attack me and they tap out. That's kind of the goal with this card, is, uh, my opponents tap out, I can swing in for a lot of damage if they don't kill each other already. That's kind of how I look at it. Another Drana. Um, five mana, four, four, flyer. She's just kind of a quick kill spell if I needed to. It's like a kill spell on a stick that I can just drain a creature. Making her stronger really isn't relevant. It's just kind of for the minus zero, minus X kind of deal. Soren, um, Target creature you control gains death touch and lifelink. And since it's going to be a vampire, it also gets plus one, plus one. Um, his other plus one is Sack of Vampire to Lightning Helix something. And then his minus three is just cheat a big vampire into play, which is usually how I use it, is just play him, put in the biggest vampire I have, and then I just kind of start plussing him to uh, make that creature stronger and death touch lifelink, so almost unblockable. Or at least bad blocks if your opponent decides to. Blind Obedience, so my opponent's creatures and artifacts enter tapped. Extort really isn't relevant. I just care about my creature or opponent's creatures entering tapped so I can swing over. Phyrexian Reclamation, um, 
just return things from your grave to your hand or creatures from your grave to the hand at instant speed. Two life is a lot. It's like, well, it's not like a lot. The two mana is like, it's not a big deal. It's just kind of like, oh, like before my turn starts or at the end of your turn, I'm just going to get some creatures back and now I have them. Dark Imposter. He's an exile spell on a man. He also has good flavor text. But uh, either way, three mana, two, two. Pay six mana, exile a creature and put a one, one counter on him. And then he has the activated abilities of all creatures. Hasn't ever really been super relevant. Like this deck came out, I think, in like 2017. Uh, I've kept him in this entire time. And I really don't think I've ever gotten some good use out of like activated abilities. It's usually just like, hey, I'm going to kill your biggest creature or exile your biggest creature rather than, hey, I'm going to try and shut down one of your engines. I don't know. Bloodline Keeper, because he poops out two twos uh, with flying, and then you can transform him to just a really good lord that now poops out uh, four fours with flying. So that's kind of how he goes. Black Market, so my creatures do die. Uh, it's not for, like, not, you know, if my opponent nukes, it's no big deal because I get a ton of black mana. If I sack him to, like, a sack outlet, this or this year, something like that, it's no big deal. Blood Tribute, just to kind of, like, goozle an opponent. Uh, kick a vampire, or tap the vampire. And then, uh, usually the way I see this going is target opponent loses 20 life and you gain 20 life in Commander. That's how I kind of see it. Last card, Phyrexian Arena. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card, lose a life. Uh, that's a good rate. Uh, losing one life to draw one card would do it any day. But um, again, that's all for my Edgar Markov Vampire EDH list. Um, there's a lot of upgrades I do want to make. If you guys do want to tell me below or in the comments or whatever, um, I know I need Twilight Prophet, things like that. But let me know if you see if, like any of the cards you run in your Edgar deck or if... Uh, you would make any improvements to mine. I always love reading about it. Well, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.